Well, basically, my name is Paul Vallus. Uh, I'm from Barcelona. I'm from Catalonia, from Spain. I've been based in the UK, in Manchester, for several years. But yeah, of course, home is home. And yeah, I'll be following the Spain during the World Cup. That's a bit of a tricky question. I think if you are rational, probably quarterfinals would be like a good ask for Spain. Um, I think that the public will demand them to, do, to play well because that's the style that Spanish uh, people is just used to see football. But we have to be aware that Spain is going through like a change of era. A lot of young players, a change of guard, just the old guys. Um, leaving a space for the Pedris, the Gavis, the Ferran Torres. And the team is not as mature as other national teams might be, like, I don't know, Brazil, Portugal, England, probably. So I, I, I think that what we should expect from Spain is just to go through from the group stage, then keep qualifying and, and let's see where football brings them, basically. Expectations are quite high. I would say, or maybe let's put it like differently. Luis Enrique is like really overanalyzed in Spain and in Spanish media in, in particular. I think that because his selections uh, probably they follow more of a tactical or a personal choice rather than the popular claims that the Spanish media wants for the national team. Um, that's why there has been a lot of critics over uh, Luis Enrique. But um, basically, I think that no one can really complain about the. Uh, results or the end product that he has delivered since he's a national team manager. He was on the semi-final on the last Euros. He has qualified for the Nations League final both years that he's been playing in. So I think that, um, yeah, those have to be the expectations. And under a team that Luis Enrique is making them play really, really well. Of course, uh, we have to go to South Africa, we have to go to, to 2010 and Iniesta's goal against the Netherlands in the final game is probably like the most iconic or the moment that most of Spanish people remember about Spain in the World Cup or at least like the youngest ge generation for sure. And I would like to recall probably the World Cup at the US in 1994, um, when Spain lost at quarterfinals against Italy in a picture, in an image, in a footage that was iconic, that was Luis Enrique, the current national team uh, manager, just bleeding and crying his way out of the pitch after an elbow blow from Tassotti from, from Italy. As Spain played really well on that game, but they didn't manage to win and Italy went um, through the final. Um, so yeah, it was a, a bit of how Spain was in the past in the World Cups. I think that in international football, probably the tactical side of football is kind of overlooked because many, basically managers don't really have time to prepare tactics just to, yeah, just to have all the mechanisms that the clubs have. But I think that this Spain side is just different. Um, this is a team that has been really molded by Luis Enrique. They play how the manager really wants to. Um, you can tell that he has a game plan for every opponent that they face. So I think that that makes them a really interesting side to watch. They probably compensate all the problems that they have or all the weaknesses that they might have with a really deep tactical approach and a really clear game plan for for Luis Enrique, which is always exciting to see, of course. I think Jeremy Pino is a really exciting player, currently at Villarreal, 20-year-old, who is uh, more of a, a right winger. Um, really exciting winger, likes to take on his man and contributing really well to the attack. So looking last season uh, in terms of all teenagers across Europe's top five leagues in terms of expected goals and expected assists per 90, only three players are posting better, than, better numbers than Jeremy Pino uh, amongst all teenagers. So it shows just how much strong contribution he's having to his team's attack. He might not be a guaranteed starter for Spain, but given the sort of energy and creation that he can offer, I think that he's a good weapon to have to, to come off the bench, whether that's to change the game or to uh, protect the lead and just make those darting runs uh, and stretch the opposition. So Jeremy Pino, really exciting player for me. I have to go with Pedri. I think that Pedri is the guy that is tipped to be the main leader for the next generation, a typical attacking midfielder. He was the best young player at the last Euros, which is, which is a good way of introducing himself to the world, basically. And I think that in the World Cup, he's tipped to do the next step, to go to the next level. Um, and yeah, just keep leading this young Spanish side 
to greater uh, success in the future. I think that their biggest weakness is the lack of goal. They have an alarmingly big lack of quality up front. Uh, Alvaro Morata is expected to be the starting number nine, which is good, and, and he has performed um, quite well on the Luis Enrique, but I think that the partners that he's going to have, uh, they are not going through um, their, their best moments in their club careers. I'm talking about Ferran Torres in Barcelona. I'm talking about Pablo Sarabia at PSG. Mikel Oyarzabal is going through a tough injury in, in Real Sociedad. So basically, I think that Spain will struggle to find talent, to find options. Uh, up front and they will have to compensate it as I was saying with good game plans and with a solid team effort which is probably the biggest strength that this team has. I'm gonna go for Nico Williams which is a, pro a really promising winger from Athletic Bilbao. His older brother is, is gonna play in the World Cup 2 for uh, Ghana national team but Nico Williams is going through like a really, really good season at Athletic Bilbao and I think that we could see glimpses of what he can offer to the Spanish national team in the last international break. He was key to the crucial win that Spain got in Portugal that led them to the national to, to the Nations League final and I'm sure that Luis Enrique is going to take that into account. He can provide the kind of a spark that Spain lacks in the attacking end. So probably Nico Williams is a name to write down on our notebooks for sure. Hello, I'm James Richardson. This upcoming World Cup, what are The Athletic going to be doing about it? Well, for starters, I'll be hosting a nightly Totally Football show with the likes of Raphael Honigstein, James Horncastle and all the rest of the Totally crew. Then every morning from Qatar, wham! The Athletic Football Podcast will be at you with David Ornstein, Matt Slater, Adam Crafton and many more. There'll also be World Cup content from Adam Hurry's Football Clichés podcast, Michael Cox's insightful Athletic Football Tactics podcast and Joe Devine's TIFO podcast with all the stories that matter from Qatar. There you go. The Athletic, your essential audio companion for the upcoming World Cup.